In this video, we will go through the process of sending an electrical database over to the mechanical domain, and then send changes. In this example, we have a simple reference design called BeagleBone Black. Here we can see board geometry, components, mounting holes, and additional information that we may want to bring over to the mechanical assembly. To send the data over, we are going to use MCAT Collaborator and IDX. This allows us to preview the information and send items that are incremental rather than a bulk upload like older methods. In this case, we're going to send a baseline file. And in this example, you can see we have a board outline, obstructs, mounting holes, and 300 components that we want to send across. We're going to send this baseline over to the mechanical domain. Similar to the electrical domain, Flowtherm XT has an add-in called CircuitWorks that allows you to preview data prior to importing it into your mechanical assembly. In order to do this, we need to add the CircuitWorks add-in into the tool. Additionally, they have a component library. The component library is a database that associates the cell name, the part number, to a solid part. So when you're associating a component in the IDX file, it will bring in the mechanical assembly comp uh, library part that you need in the design. We will open the ECAD file, browse to our IDX file, and open it up. In CircuitWorks, you can preview the information. You can see that in this IDX file, we have board outlines, we have components, we have mounting holes, and some keep out areas. Uh, since it is a baseline, we want to accept all data and send it over to a mechanical assembly and create it from scratch. Here we'll press the build model button. Once the process is complete, you now see a mechanical assembly defined by the electrical IDX file. Here we can see our library components placed, the board geometry, as well as the feature tree identifying the part numbers, cell names, and other elements we brought in through CircuitWorks. In this example, we will make a minor modification to the USB connector. We'll slightly move it up as it needs to fit the mechanical enclosure. I will delete this SOIC as it's too close to the USB connector and may cause a DRC violation. Now that it's deleted, we will bring this data into CircuitWorks. In CircuitWorks, we'll do the import model, which will describe the changes between the assembly that was created from the electrical domain and compare against what has been changed in the mechanical assembly and only change those elements and send those incremental changes in an IDX file. Here, you can see the IDX file. You can change the name of the overall file, mkd underscore change one. In this case, I'll just leave it the default. And you can see that P3 was modified, whereas U8 was deleted. And we'll press OK to generate the file. We can even see in the history section, the current status, that a baseline has been applied, a change has been sent out, and we're awaiting a response from the electrical domain. In the electrical domain, you can see the proposal file was automatically identified and highlighted in the MCAD collaborator interface. We can select it to review the items. In this case, we can see that P3 has been modified and U8 has been deleted. We can also visually validate it by selecting the highlight button, and you'll see a small modification of the USB connector, as well as the IC disappearing as it was deleted. We'll accept this change and apply it in our design. Everything was accepted, and we need to send a response to show the mechanical domain what elements were accepted and rejected. To complete the round trip, we need to import the response to see if the electrical designer accepted every item or rejected certain elements of the proposal file. Here we can open and browse to the IDX response file and see it was accepted in all cases. We can do the build model to synchronize the ECAD and MCAD databases.